Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, with a very short Ask Dave. It's a, a, a little one to clarify a misstatement that I think I've made many times. Uh, and it's brought to us by uh, Kent Eichstedt, K9AEE. He says, it's not a question, just a tip. Okay. He says, electrical conduit and chain link fence top rail are made of galvanized steel, not aluminum. Now this is a mistake I've made often. I've talked about it as aluminum. It's fairly light. Um, and he talks about electrical conduit also being made of steel. He says the ultimate test, of course, is to just take a magnet and apply it to it and it will stick, the magnet will stick. Uh, which you will not do to aluminum. Aluminum is not a ferrous metal. Uh, so uh, just pointing out that this is steel. So it's a little stronger than aluminum. Uh, it's going to weigh a little bit more. And uh, chain link fences are generally made of steel. Generally always made of steel uh, rather than aluminum. I don't know of a titanium fence like that. That'd be really expensive. He says he knows this because he worked in a steel mill for 44 years where the sheet metal uh, was made. I also visited a customer near Chicago that manufactured conduit and fence posts, top rails and sign posts. It's an interesting process of taking a narrow coil of cold rolled steel and forming it into a tube with lubrication sprayed inside as the tube is completed and a the seam uh, resistance uh, the seam was resistance welded okay i also have done a bit of conduit cutting and bending also a magnet will stick to both so 73 from kent k9 aee okay so um apply this footnote to the 400 videos that I've made that if I say aluminum top rail I mean steel uh, and that is what it is it is steel now does that mean that it is not as conductive as copper well aluminum is nearly as conductive as copper uh, steel is not steel is significantly less conductive but not so significantly that you can't uh, use it like LMR 400 the center conductor is aluminum but it is coated with copper okay see so wait a minute those two metals can't be put directly together well that's because one is actually um, oh, what do they call it plated plated onto the other if you don't get water or some other accelerant underneath there then the thing will stay there forever without uh, going bad there are ways now there are methods for welding aluminum that are a lot easier it used to be that you couldn't even consider welding to aluminum but there are uh, special made uh, bars that you can use for brazing uh, the aluminum together and of course now uh, the kind of uh, welding that puts out an inert gas right over the area you're welding it's very common and you can pick that up from harbor freight tools if you have to uh, put a couple pieces of aluminum together but in the meantime of course regular steel can be welded uh, do anything that you want to uh, make that work forever so there you go. I'm going to say thank you to Kent for being the man there. He did it for 44 years, and he knows steel, and I don't. I'm an electrical engineer, and for me, when I think metal, I think copper. Uh, the only element that conducts better than copper is silver, which uh, a number of connectors you can buy. For example, silver-plated connectors. Uh, that will make a very good contact. Uh, some of the little uh, microwave connectors are gold-plated, very thin sheet of gold, not because so much of its conductance, but because it won't corrode. And the connector is so small that a small amount of corrosion can really cause a problem. Silver does corrode. You ought to clean your silver uh, conductors every so often with silver polish to make sure that they stay in good shape. 
Of course, superconductors can be made of a variety of things, including ceramics, but you usually have to get those really cold before they'll superconduct. What superconducting means is that the resistance in the wire goes to phenomenally low levels. So you can take a wire as thick as this paper clip right here and put hundreds of amps through it, okay, because there's no resistance. This is how they do the big magnetic resonance imaging things that need very, very, very powerful magnets. Those are electromagnets in there, um, along with some existing magnets. And uh, they're actually superconducting. One of the things you hear that clanking that's in there is the system that keeps that stuff really, really cold. They, I think it's liquid hydrogen that they use uh, around those, if not liquid nitrogen, which would be maybe a little easier to come up with. Okay, so there's our metal lesson for the day. Um, and then when talking about steel, we're talking about heavy metal. Until we next meet, 73.